Hi, this is Vicki Gopher Cornell, and I have come to share a word from the Lord I received today. I received it at 12 to 24 to 15 p.m. Today is 12 to 24. I've been praying and seeking the Lord um, about many things, including the Pearl Harbor vision I had in 23, a word that was spoken, the Black King Rises 11, 26, 22, Seeking the Lord for the meaning of these, because one mentions a Pearl Harbor moment. Pearl Harbor was a surprise attack. And I've been seeking the Lord, do you mean an actual attack on Pearl Harbor, or do you mean just a surprise attack like Pearl Harbor? And I will discuss that more at the end, Lord willing. This dream is entitled, The Pearl Harbor Moment of Past Words. But in addition, it's not a word I want to give, but I will. I'm asking you to try this, test it, discern it, let for Jesus Christ. Ask Him for His truth. I understand the Word, but you need to seek Him and have keep that firm, strong relationship between you and Him as well. You need to try everything. Every person, every message, everything, every time. I do. Why? Because if it were possible, the very elect would be deceived, it says. You'll have to Google that or internet search, whatever. I apologize. I need to get that, that scripture out and remember where it goes. This is the time of strong delusion. It's already begun. Let's pray, and I will deliver this word in the name of Jesus Christ. For Father God's glory and no other. It's not a word I want to give. Father God, in Jesus Christ's name. I come before you and I say, let everything I do bring glory to you. I ask you, strengthen me, me and anoint me. I'm one person, but Lord, if I can reach one more for you, one more for you, Jesus Christ, one more, then let it be so. Let it be so. I've already prayed against no retaliation, backlash, interference, or such like. I've already prayed against spying, Lord. I've prayed against witchcraft. I've prayed against... The physical weapons combined, Lord. But now, Lord, I ask that you open the hearts, minds, and the eyes of those that need to hear and understand this, Lord. So many take the first thing they hear and run with it. I used to do it, Lord. And then I started praying over my mind and praying for under, asking for understanding, discernment, wisdom, good judgment. And then I started praying Ephesians 1, 17-19 over everything. I read, I do, I see, I hear, and I pray that right now over all that would hear this video, all that would read these PDFs, all that would participate in any form, fashion, indirectly, directly, randomly with anything you have me put out, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name, for the glory of Father God. Uh, Jesus Christ, I ask that you send this where you want it to go. I ask that you would give us a burden to reach the lost. Not just our, our, our four no more, as, as my pastor used to say. My four no more. Father God, there's a whole world lost and dying and going to hell that we need to reach. We've got to look beyond my four no more to the lost soul standing beside us at the workplace, at the school, at the home. Father God, we are called to be disciples. Send us out to be disciples. Stir our hearts, God. Take away the fear and trepidation. I would rather offend somebody into heaven than to love them into hell. What worse torment than to hear a child say to a parent, that ends up in hell. Why did you not tell me? Father God. Father God. Help us to refocus. Everybody's focusing on holidays. It's not the time. Father God, help us to refocus on you. Refocus on you, Lord. Refocus on you in Jesus Christ's name. I hear what you've been saying, Lord. I ask that you help us to refocus on you. Give us a hunger for your word. Give us a hunger to spend time, to draw away and spend time alone with you in prayer and praise and worship. We need it for the battle that's coming, Lord. Help us to stand firm in you in all things. In Jesus Christ's name, give us strength, Lord, 
to be all we're called to be for you. In Jesus Christ's name I pray and ask. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, again, this first, this came 12 to 24 at 2.15 p.m. The Pearl Harbor moment of passwords. And that's important, the Pearl Harbor moment. That's what had me praying and seeking the Lord. Here we go. Besides the Holy Spirit put it on my heart. Daughter, hear me. No more delays. I move on Putin to fire. Even with all the warnings, even with all the warnings, all the warnings, your people have still failed to repent. Did you not see how they boast? Putin is trembling in fear. Putin is not going to move. Putin is not much of a man. Putin is a monster, and they don't know it. Within him lies the Antichrist spirit. He will fire on Ukraine. He will burn it down and what's left will go into captivity to him. He is part of this end plan. He must reacquire the land that belonged to Gog. But daughter, daughter, Ukraine is wicked. It's evil. The insides, it's like a cancerous sickness with all the corrupt filth the blackmail, the money laundering, the lies, the trafficking. I see it all. Everybody's expecting Orshnik. I say, Satan comes to Ukraine and it will level up Kiev. Hear me now, daughter. The questions you seek, you've been seeking about Pearl Harbor. I say this now. Your Pearl Harbor attack that you are looking for is of a nuclear sort. Yes, Hawaii will be attacked. Yes, Hawaii, Hawaii will be in the invasion. Yes, Hawaii will have part of its islands taken. Yes, yes, yes. But the Pearl Harbor moment is a surprise attack like that of Pearl Harbor from the enemy. But daughter, your enemies lies within your own government and without. What you are feeling is that feeling of dread. That feeling of this is going to happen. Even though you want it to come to pass, you don't want it to come to pass. Because you've seen what nuclear war looks like. You've seen the burning flesh as it drips from the bodies. It must be, daughter. It must be. Your nation will not celebrate another new year, daughter. You'll be in war that leads to captivity. And I hear your question. Is that war going to be a, a strike on NATO, which causes the U.S. to be in the war with Russia? Yes and no. Yes, there will be strikes and attacks with NATO and Russia. But no, daughter, Putin will fire. He will fire his nuclear weapon. And I hear you say, how is that possible? When Taiwan has not even been invaded, the darkness has not come. The suddenlies, daughter. The suddenlies. The suddenlies, daughter, it's going to happen so fast no one will have time to breathe hardly. And I warned them all. I warned my people I warned my children. I warned the unsaved through my children. So what happens is by your own choice. Tell my children to get ready to leave because I'm getting ready to come. And I have said this over and over and many are getting lax because I keep warning that I'm on my way. Daughter, I am literally on my way. I'm commanding the darkness to come to be for three days. I'm commanding Putin to fire. I'm commanding all these things to happen. The suitcase nukes so I can come for my beloved children. Now warn my people it's time for this to happen. While they all just wiped their mouths from their fat dinners, Putin was waiting for this opportune time. That's how he ended it. 
I want to say what Jesus was talking about, referring to where I want it to happen, but I don't. I want Jesus Christ to come and get his bride out of all this horrendous mess. I see how they're struggling and they're fighting and it's a non-stop battle. But I also know for that to happen, these horrible things have to happen too. That's what he was talking about. Here are the verses. Luke 21, 36. Isaiah 40, 17 through 18. 48, 3. Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39. Matthew 24, 6. Jeremiah 17, 9. Genesis 6, 5. Matthew 15, 18 through 19. 1 John 4, 3. 1 John 2, 18. Proverbs 21, 1. Psalms 2, 1 through 5. Galatians 6, 9. Hebrews 9, 28. Matthew 25, 13. Revelation 3, 10 through 11. Verse 20. John 10, 28 through 30. Daniel 2, 21 through 22. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8. Luke 21, 25 through 28. And James 1, 12. I ask that you take this to Jesus Christ in prayer. Now, I had released a short word on Telegram. Facebook and the YouTube community pages. When I turned it on, it caused it to. And I did not, I was not told to do a video on it, but I did release it. This is what I released. On December 1st at 7.41 a.m., I posted it on Telegram and then went from there. I'm sharing this in the authority of Jesus Christ's name for God's glory and to have my brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ help pray about this. I have been told to release this now. For many days in the spirit realm, I have been hearing these words of warning. Satan to come to Ukraine. That's the word way he said. Satan to come to Ukraine. Today I have received more and am being told by sweet Holy Spirit. Now is the time to share this in full. Please try, test, discern, and pray about all things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Here is the full message I hear now in the spirit realm. Satan's ready. Satan to come to Ukraine. And I want to thank my friend in Sweden for giving me information, understanding what Satan was. Excuse me, just a moment. Thank you, Lord. Now, on 11-26-22, I released the word, The Black King Rises. I'm going to read just a little part of it. The word came from my lovely Jesus after deep prayer. This was one of those, yeah. Riots in China, smoke screens for real activities of Xi Jinping, Taiwan. No Christmas Day celebration on the 25th of December. Black King rises from the pits of the abyss. Another Pearl Harbor attack. It will be on 7th of December. Another Pearl Harbor attack. Now that does not mean an actual Pearl Harbor attack. We know that because of the vision and what was just said. Another Pearl Harbor. A surprise attack coming on the 7th. But um, Hawaii will be attacked. There was a dream, so it begins dream. 925-22, I had where Hawaii and Guam were attacked after Taiwan. Um, it says, tell my people to get the sin out now because tomorrow's too late for some. Hawaii is about to go under daughter. Your Pearl Harbor moment is the invasion on you, uh, on your nation. Again, this is symbolic. Hawaii is symbolic of the U.S. at this point, representing the whole U.S. Your Pearl Harbor moment is the invasion on your nation. All this that works is intertwined. The suddenly, they start the event that leads into everything. 
I have, um, Hawaii was the location of Pearl Harbor, but represents our nation in this phrase because Jesus Christ says, your Pearl Harbor moment. That's what he kept pointing out. I said, moment, daughter. What was Pearl Harbor? It was a surprise attack on America, Hawaii, America, by the enemy. Hawaii is symbolic for the whole U.S. because all these things are intertwined with the suddenlies. Here's the vision that I had. Oh, and the, and the rest of that, for those of you that's been studying close these words, the rest of this word pertaining to this part, I took part of the top and part of the bottom. Right after your Pearl Harbor moment is the invasion on your nation. It all works in intertwined. Look to the seventh daughter. Look to the seventh for the ending of it all. The beginning of the end, this I say. And those of you studying the seventh, that should, you may want to look at the Black King Rises 11, 26, 22. Here's the Pearl Harbor vision I had. Now, I also sat back and listened to the video. And I'm going to give you the information, something I said, and, and the point on YouTube where you can go back and listen to it if you want. While driving back to Alabama from Tennessee, a vision appeared before my eyes. It was if the sky rolled apart. It was only a few short moments, but I saw a lot in this short time. I saw a harbor that was made of pearls. Pearls adorned in it, in, adorned it in large sizes. It was built out of round pearls. I saw colorful confetti begin falling from the sky. So I looked up to see what it was originating from. Fireworks? It looks like exploding fireworks. Then next I heard a voice yell, Surprise! Like one would do at a surprise birthday party. But then, as the different colored confettis began hitting the nearby building ships in the harbor, made of pearls, each piece began exploding like bombs. Explosions were occurring everywhere. And just as suddenly it appeared, it was gone, as if it had never appeared in the sky. I looked down at the van's digital clock, and it read 6.59. Look to the seventh for the ending. On the 908 mark of YouTube, when I did this video, it's on Rumble and other places, but on YouTube, I can give you the exact mark timestamp. When you go in to the um, transcript, you'll get the recording. I said, so I don't know if it means there, there's going to be some kind of attack. This is symbolic of an attack, a surprise attack like then, or it's the actual Pearl Harbor. And I meant a surprise attack symbolic as in when Pearl Harbor was attacked. It was a surprise. Every entry I looked up, Pearl Harbor, a surprise attack, a surprise attack, a surprise attack from the enemy. Some said from the military government in Japan, but they're all saying it was a surprise attack from the enemy that led into the war. I don't know if it means this day, the 7th, or the year I had put down. The Pearl Harbor attack was a surprise attack by Japan by our enemy on December the 7th. Again, no year has been given. But a lot of other words, it talks about no Christmas and stuff. These things are happening this year. But God can change if he so chooses. Redeem is 7. So I'm asking you to take this to Jesus Christ in prayer. Again, it's a Pearl Harbor moment. Will Hawaii be attacked? Yes, it will. Taiwan will be attacked. So will Japan. After that, sometime after that, Hawaii and Guam will be attacked. And yes, there will be islands and other things that, that's taken. Things I've not shared and I can't go into all that. I ask that you take this to Jesus Christ in prayer. I am seeking the Lord. I, I seek the Lord continually on these things. And I occasionally I go through the videos. I go through the PDFs. I go through, Lord, is there anything you need? You're wanting to show me. Or he'll direct me just say, pull this up. Pull this up. He's got me looking at some others. And it's like the food recall dream. I just shared it. Just had the dream. 670,000 pounds of meat for listeria. One of the, or E. coli. 
The Lord mentioned E. coli, listeria would be used, mislabeling, and others besides listeria and E. coli. And then I just got another thing about a, a, a gazillion eggs and cucumbers, carrots, every carrots, every kind, you know, and I was getting ready to update that, and the Lord was talking to me about some other things. And let me make an announcement right quick. Those of you that has donated money to um, a Gappy Orphanage, we had a little issue with getting payments to him, but that seems to be straightened out now, so those donations have went through. I sent them out before I got this video done. And uh, I just wanted to let let everyone know. So if you've been in contact with Sil Yondo and he said that he hadn't received it yet, he knows the issue. We've been working with him. I have a, a contact too. Sometimes it's hard for me from America to get money to UK. I mean to, to Uganda. So I have other contacts. And sometimes they just don't want to send to accept your money from a ministry to go somewhere. I have run into that, and, um, <laughs> you know, even with me saying, I have been friends with this man since 2014. I have seen the orphanage grow from a few kids to 70-something. You know, I've watched it grow. I've, you know, they were fine until I went, when they, I won't lie, when they asked me, well, are you related? I say, he's my brother in Christ. And when I said said that, it was like, oh, we can't send this. <laughs> I said, okay, Lord, what do you want to do now? So we have got that straightened out, I think. Um, I know that we're getting money to him, let's put it like that. And just, um, everybody help me just pray. Lord's will be done in that matter. I'm not one of those that give up. If Lord says give money, send it, I will keep on till, you know. However, whatever has to be done for the Lord's will to be done. The Word of God says, I'm going to quote this again, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4.13. What does that mean? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If I'm led by the Holy Spirit, led like Proverbs 3.5.6 says, it's going to get done one way or the other. Sometimes he'll just test you to see if you're going to push and keep trying. I'm not one of those that give up very easily. After everything I've been through, if, if, if you had any idea how hard it was during the times I was in the apartments at the beginning to get a video up with the enemy around me, the upper elites of our nation in that apartment complex, interfering with everything. That's before I learned how to pray. I mean, I prayed, but I didn't know how to war. I started praying Psalms 144.1. I'll say this again and again. Prayer works. Blessed be the Lord my strength who teaches my hands to warm my fingers to fight. And I said, Lord Jesus Christ, teach me how to war physically and spiritually. Teach me how to war. And I'm just sharing what I'm learning. And I've had a lot of people thank me. And all I'm doing is just sharing is sharing what Jesus Christ has showed me because we're supposed to to edify, uplift, and, and help one another, not tear them down. I don't want to be one of those that's going to be known for tearing down my brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ, for pointing an accusing finger at them when they can say, Jesus Christ is my Lord, without any hesitation. It it makes me fearful for those people's souls that do things like that. God is merciful. I pray for conviction in the Holy Spirit to lean heavy on them. I don't want anybody to go to hell. I don't want any person, any savable person to go to hell and then spend their eternity with a lake of fire. I don't wish that on anyone. I wish for all to spend their eternity and know the love of Jesus Christ. He is a love like no other. He is a love that supersedes all. If we could just grasp just a little, we can only get a grasp a little. If we could understand His love, we'd be blown away. We'd be running to serve Him. He'd be running about His feet. Just be humbled to be able to do that because he's 
give so much. We think we know love on this earth. Love between people is fickle. I love you if you love me. Jesus Christ loves us unconditionally. Just the way we are. He says, come to me. You don't clean yourself up to come to Jesus Christ. He takes you in all your mess. Loves you. Forgives you when you cry out in true repentance. And he'll clean you up himself. Some get cleaned up immediately. Some a little at a time. You don't judge. You let Jesus Christ do the cleaning up because he knows what pace each person can do. Don't condemn somebody that's still trying to work their way to heaven. That's still trying. Don't condemn them. They may not. I've had people tell me before I come out that I knew about how the earth was really shaped. That would say... I don't understand how if you hear from God, you don't know this. Well, one thing, I couldn't talk about it. But until God reveals that to somebody, you believe what you've been taught. Be careful how you judge people. You know, there's a lot in this world and God's not going to reveal it all in one person. So when you see somebody, even people that may have been saved for a long time, doing things that you think is wrong, you need to be careful. If the Lord is working on that person to remove that or to clean that up, again, he's doing it in his pace and their pace because he knows what each person can do. You have some people that gets delivered immediately. You have some people that takes years to get delivered. There's a lot of things, a lot of scars, a lot of hurt, a lot of other things and years and years of addiction and years and years of other things. Sometimes it doesn't break off immediately. God has to deal also with that mindset of I am worthy. You know, I am worthy through Jesus Christ instead of I'm not worthy. And then the devil will always fight you. Oh, you have not got rid of your cigarettes. You have not got rid of overeating. You still gossip, but you're trying. Be careful how you judge. God knows who's trying and who's not. God knows the hearts and intents of every person. And what I'm learning, there's more that's out here. Those that's looking at somebody and saying, you know better. You should not be their, Pharisee, their Pharisees and Sadducees. Don't let anybody tell you different. If you know you are working with Jesus Christ, he's convicting, he's leading, and you're going at the pace, he is leading you. Don't let somebody that thinks they know it all come in and tell you different. But I will say this. If you have already been convicted of something and you are not trying to do it and you are ignoring and pushing it away, you need to be very careful. The Holy Spirit may quit dealing with you on that and you don't want that. They seek a Jesus Christ, Father God, Holy Spirit, want a clean temple to live in. But again, the Holy Spirit who knows the heart. Father God knows the heart. Will lead you at the pace they have set up for you. Not what your brother thinks. Not what your mama thinks. Not what your pastor thinks. Not your relationship with Jesus Christ. You build that and he will help you. He will. Take this to Jesus Christ in prayer. I see a lot of people that gets condemned. Even people. I'm, I'm going to say this. My mom smoked for a long time. My mom was saved. My mom was filled with the Holy Spirit. She had got delivered from them and picked them back up. And from that time on, it had been a battle. She wanted to quit. She tried to quit. She prayed to quit. She fasted. She finally did get delivered. 
Because understand, smoking is addiction. There's a spirit involved. A demon spirit that was oppressing and attacking her. Was she saved? Yes. Did she love the Lord? Yes. But until the Lord Jesus Christ, and it was a lot of purging and testing and things because with with her, she had been delivered. Went through prayer line, was prayed for, was delivered. I forget what happened. I don't remember. But she picked them back up. And she'd already been delivered. And when she picked them back up, it was a battle. Many people, they loved my mom. But they looked at, looked down on her because she was smoking. I saw the battle. I saw the battle she went through. And I know she loved the Lord. I used to sit outside the bathroom. Yeah. She would go in there to pray because there was four kids. And I would hear her pray. I know she loved the Lord. So don't judge your brother and sister. If they're battling something. If the Lord is truly working with them, the Lord being the Lord Jesus Christ, how dare you judge them and knock them down when they're fighting with all they can? You know, when you point your thumb and your finger at somebody, you know, like that thumb comes right back at you. Why don't we do what the Word of God says and love our brothers and sisters? In Jesus Christ. Lift them up in prayer instead of condemning them. You know, I, I, I had to repent today. Because I had an issue here. And um, I wasn't ugly. I didn't say nothing. I was polite with the person that had come up causing some issues. And I didn't say nothing. But when I come into the house, I made a few comments to my son. This person's not saved. I should expect that kind of behavior. And I had to repent. I never said anything ugly to them, never. But when I came in, and it was just little comments, but still, I was convicted because when a person's not saved, you can expect ugly, ugly actions. We're supposed to react and be like Jesus Christ. I told you I'm not perfect, not by a long shot. But I do know to repent, repent quickly. And my son even brought it up because he had said something about it too. We, we both had talked and I had to run out. He called me. He said, Mom, we, we shouldn't have talked like that. And he's right. And I'd been praying on my way. And um, we repented. Lord, I'm sorry. Was it what most people in this world would call bad? But it still was not a favorable word to that person, even though in the eyes of the world they would have deserved a lot worse. But you know what? That's not how we have to be. We have to reflect Jesus Christ in front of people and in private. Jesus Christ is here. He's already in the room. He sees everything we do. Everything we do. He knows our thoughts. He knows our hearts. He knows when you're sitting in front of the TV watching something you should. He not, shouldn't. He knows when you're reading a book you shouldn't or a magazine he knows if you're playing a game you shouldn't he knows your thoughts if you're sitting in church put your minds on everything else he knows he's already in the room with you please take that to prayer in jesus Christ's name all right if you don't know jesus Christ as your lord and savior now is the time I'm going to say this again. Jesus Christ is a love like no other. He will never let you down like this world. Family, friends, so-called friends and family. You know, you've got both kinds. He will not let you down. If anybody walks away from this relationship, it will be you. Because Jesus Christ will never leave you nor forsake you. He, he will go with you to the very end. If you will let him. You don't have to clean yourself up. He'll do it for you. You come as you are. And you let him work on you. He will wash your sins away. Your sins. What are sins? The bad things you've done. He will forgive them. 
He will not remember them anymore. So if you've cussed, if you're cussing, if you're committing adultery, if you're living in a homosexual lifestyle, lesbian li lifestyle, if you've had an abortion, if you've cheated, stolen, lied, all these things are forgivable. And Jesus Christ will forgive you. Please say this prayer with me. Jesus Christ, speak to my heart, change my life. I ask that you would take this stony heart and turn it into one of flesh. I ask your blood, cleanse me and cover me and wash me from all my sins. I confess and believe you are the Son of God who gave his life, life on Calvary. They couldn't take it. He gave it freely. I confess and believe that he rose again victorious on the third day. I accept you into my heart as my Lord and my Savior here and now. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Hallelujah, and it's that simple. It's that simple. I do recommend you get you a hard copy Bible. And pray and ask the Holy Spirit, or Jesus Christ, in Jesus Christ's name. You want to pray in Jesus Christ's name. Which copy? This is a KJV. Um, uh, King James Version, KJV. But ask the Holy Spirit, or Jesus Christ, to lead you to which translation is best for you. And then ask Jesus Christ to lead you to his truth. I recommend you start in the book of John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. I do recommend you get water baptized. It is symbolic. Romans 6 talks about it. Of being baptized. Being water baptized is symbolic of being baptized in the spirit. And of our new life in Jesus Christ. It's also a sign of our new covenant. And it also talks about. Go ye out into the world and baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But that is also referring to water baptism, but laying hands on people and then receiving the baptizing of the Holy Spirit, which is the outpouring. It is a deeper level of the Holy Spirit. I also recommend get around like-minded people, meaning people that love Jesus Christ passionately. You can pray and ask Jesus Christ to lead you to those people. It might be on the internet, it might be a Bible study at a college. If the Lord leads you to a church, but pray and ask Him to lead you to one that preaches the full gospel, meaning everything and not just parts of it. That there is a hell, it is real, sin, you, you need to preach on sin and repentance, the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. Jesus Christ can lead you exactly where you need to go to grow. All right. This is the My Lovely Jesus Ministry. Again, I'm going to say this little disclaimer. If you've been asked not to use any of these PDFs or videos or such like, then you do not have permission to use, this one, use these at all. Um, and it's up to you to, if you say you walk in the integrity of the Lord, to do as the Lord Jesus Christ would do when you're asked not to do that. I've had to ask that before because of misuse of these things. Otherwise, they're free to use. We have the website www.mylovelyjesusministry.com I was trying to see if there's anything else I needed to. Um, and everything on there is free to use again as long as it's not misused. And um, there is also a page for ebooks transcripts where I put most of the PDFs on there or in ebook form. That way you get the word as it came from me and not somebody there have been some where I've had people supposedly helping and they've messed some of them up and I'm going through them as I can and, and getting them worded right. But all in all Jesus Christ will see that the correct message gets out to those that seek. Alright. Take this to Jesus Christ in prayer. This is not a word I want to deliver. I'm praying for all. 
I'll just tell you, I've been praying a lot for the people in Ukraine, but also the people in Russia. I've been praying for the people in Taiwan, but I'm also praying for the people in China. I've been praying for all this that's coming. My brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. Don't let fear grip you. Fear has no future for a child of God. God bless. Stay under the blood of Jesus Christ always. Bye-bye for now.